Dr. Nussbaum, who will talk about a very interesting two to the power in the Thank you. Uh, so I'd like to thank Darone for inviting me to speak in slightly alien territory. Uh, but actually, I think the problem I'm going to discuss, while not something I'm actively working on anymore, might very well be an interesting topic for people who use computers in a serious way. And I'll try to explain what I mean. And uh, so let me begin by just telling you what the two to the end conjecture is and giving you some vague idea why people might be interested. I, uh, I will just say in general that I came to this uh, because of some work I was doing on iterated maps defined on various codes. And then I'll try to explain it a little different. So the situation is this. Let, let's imagine that we've got, maybe I'll bring this down. We've got a map F which takes Rn to Rn. And I, I take some norm on Rn. And in particular, I'm going to take what's usually written as the sub norm or the L infinity norm. And this is just by definition, the, the, excuse me, the, the maximum <coughs> There are many other interesting norms, or non-standard norms, what things one might think of as non-standard, if you only like Euclidean norms, uh, which you can put on Rn. And let me just mention the L1 norm, which I'm going to come back to later, which is by definition the sum from i equals 1 to n absolute xi. And just to pique your curiosity a little, let me mention a norm uh, on a finite dimensional vector space, a subspace of Rn. Let's let v be the set of x in Rn such that um, the sum of from i equals 1 to n of xi is so it's a n minus one dimensional subspace. And on that subspace, I'm going to define, um, I won't give it a name, but it's sort of an, an interesting thing to play around with. Let me define the norm of x to be the maximum for one, this is an n v, one less than or equal to i of x i, minus the minimum So your first impulse might be, wait a minute, if you plug in x equal 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, that's 0, that's not a norm, because the norm of this is 0. But 1, 1, 1 has been excluded from that subspace. Okay. This thing is not actually a bizarre norm. It's actually closely related to something called Hilbert's projective metric. So. I'll tell you what that is. Okay, now let's come back to the original situation where f took rn to rn. So in general, if you have a norm on rn, so think of one of those examples up there. And you have a map f which takes Let's, let me be a little more general. That takes D and Rn, a subspace of Rn to Rn. F is called non-expansive with respect to the norm. It's non-expansive with respect to, WRT, with respect to the norm if the following is true. The norm of f of x minus f of y is less than or equal to the norm of x minus y for all x, y, in R. Or, excuse me, in, in the set D. Okay. So now I can tell you what the 2 to the n conjecture is. 
So the two to the n conjecture says, let's, for reasons I'll try to explain more later, let's take the norm to be the soup norm, the one at the very top. And let's assume that f takes some subset d of rn to rn. is non-expansive. Now, of course, you always have to say with respect to what norm. So with respect to WRT, the super. And okay, that's the setup. I'll give you some examples. These things, for example, come up when you study what are called max plus operators and generalizations of so-called max plus operators. They come up in game theory and control theory. You come up in a whole variety of places. And I'm interested in the following question. Suppose we have a periodic point of such a map. So by that I mean, suppose we have some x naught and d such that f to the p of x naught equals x naught. Where by this I mean f to the p, I mean p iterates of f. So f to the p is just f composed on f, I'll use this notation, p iterates. Okay, and suppose that p is minimal. So if p is 1, it's a so-called fixed point. If p is minimal, a minimal p which does this, assuming there is some p. And then x naught is called the periodic point of f of period p, if this happens. So, so the conjecture is the following. In this framework, uh, p is always less than or equal to 2 to the n. Okay, now, I made this conjecture uh, in 1990. So it's a new spot conjecture. Well, it's an example, actually, of an unfortunate thing that happens in mathematics. Sometimes you tell people something informally and they forget that you told them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so I told a number of people and they forgot that I told them. That. <laughs> but yes, I was the first person brash enough, I should say, to make this conjecture because I had no evidence at all to speak of, with, with one exception. It's, as I'll show you in a second, it's very easy to show that every p less than or equal to 2 to the n happens for some f. Oh, so it's best possible if it true. It is best possible if true. Yeah. Okay. So let, let me make two, two comments. There's a, a, a point here that you might sort of miss. The F here is not defined on all of Rn. Okay. Now, it is not true for general norms that if you have a map, map F which is non-expansive and defined on a subset of Rn, that has an extension as a map of Rn to Rn such that it remains non-expansive. That is false, for example, with the L1 norm up there. Yeah, R. Not true for n equals 1, is it? n equals 1 is trivial. There's only one norm. Oh, I'm talking about not general functions. I'm talking about in general, on Rn, it is not true in general. The norm is important. The norm is important. You can't necessarily extend your map in such a way that it remains non-expansive. However, the beautiful thing about the soup norm is you can. If you've got a map which is defined on any subset of Rn and is non-expansive in that norm at the top of the board, it can be extended to a map on all of Rn, which remains non-expansive. And you can, in fact, write down a formula, which 
which I'm not going to do. Okay, but there you can extend it. Okay. So that means if I want to find examples, I don't have to go writing down the general function on all of Rn and laboriously check that it's not expansive there. I just have to find a D, find a map that's not expansive on that D, and check things there. So the D I'm going to choose to give you the only motivation, the only evidence I actually have for making this conjecture was let's take D to be um, D is 1 minus 1 to the n. So I mean all vectors whose coordinates are either 1 or minus 1. So This D has been carefully chosen, so life is wonderful on D. Because if you take any points x and y and D, and x is not equal to y, then you can easily see that the norm of x minus y actually equals 2. <coughs> the, super. the maximum between the coordinates. So now let's just define. Uh, well, let, let me just show you how you get a period 2 to the n. Just label the, all the points in D. How many points are there in D? Yeah. 2 to the n. Let's just label the points in D x1 up through x2 to the n. You could, the same trick works for any period less than or equal to 2 to the n. So you label the points of D. x1, x2, through x2 um, to the n. Okay. Let's just define a map f. Take f takes d to d by f of xi super i is x super i plus 1. And of course it the 2 to the n stage, and f of x2 to the n is x1. You can, you can label them in any way, it doesn't matter. What's the difference between, if you took any two points, x and y, are at distance 2? And the same thing is true for f of x and f of y. So therefore, it's not expansive, and it has period 2 to the n. Now, if you wanted to write this thing down as a map of all Rn, you'd have to know how to extend it. But there, are, as I say, there are standard formulas that will do that. And that fails completely in these other norms. Okay. So at least you know you're not going to do any better than 2 to the n. All right. So the next question you probably should be asking is why is anybody at all interested in such maps? Let me just give you a class of examples which arise in applications. So some examples of non-expansive maps in the soup norm defined on all of Rn. Is it open for n plus small n? Yeah, I mean, it is uh, known for small n? I'm going to okay. explain what's known. Which, uh, what's known is actually, well, I'll explain. All right, so an example of a non-expansive map. The <coughs> so I'll gimmick it up a little bit. So I, I'm going to write down the ith coordinate. So f, the ith coordinate of f acting on x is what? You either, either take the max or the min, depending on i, of the following collection of real numbers. Uh, Aij plus epsilon ij times xj, as j goes from 1 to n. <coughs> now, what are these constants here? Aij are any real numbers. 
and epsilon ij is plus or minus one. And the ij are just real numbers. So for each i, you make a choice, max or min. That's part of the definition. And then I'll leave it to you to check that, that it's not expensive. talk is going to be almost completely proof-free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know, but that's what it will be, because there's not really time to do proofs. I, I will make one plug. Uh, a colleague of mine wrote a book called Nonlinear Peron Frobenius Theory, which has appeared in Cambridge University Press, and if you actually want to know some of the details, and some of the references, that's the place to look. So I'm also, there, there are many people whose names I should mention, and I'm not mentioning them, but I'll mention maybe a few, but not everybody. Okay, so that's an example. And things like this, if the epsilon ij's are all one, and you always take either a max or a min, arise in things called machine scheduling problems. But the, 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 this is much more general. And then, of course, you want to generate more and take compositions of such things. And you'll quickly realize if you don't have a general theory, things can get out of hand quite quickly. OK. So what is known? Uh, let me come back. Tell me again, the x on the left-hand side refers to the lot of the, oh, oh, is that x, I, I'm sorry, I mean, it's, it's x is in yeah, yeah, okay, fine, I thought it was in the end. Um, okay. These are not hard things, but you have to sit down and check if it really works. Okay. Um, so what's no? As far as the actual 2 to the n conjecture, unfortunately, almost nothing. And that's where I hoped on some young aspiring members of the audience can come in, because I, I have to warn you, it can be a time sink. <laughs> okay. So what's known, uh, the conjecture is true, and not too hard, if n equals 1, that's trivial, n equals 2. Uh, Richard Lyons and I wrote a 30-page paper approximately almost 20 years ago now in which we proved that it's true for n equals 3. Okay, so there, to this date, there seems to be no easy proof of it for n equals 3. So it's true for n equals 3. And n equals 2 is easy? Relatively easy. It's actually a special case of a theorem of N, a general theorem of N. Oh, so it's not trivial. So it's not tri no, no, I mean, it's not trivial. I mean, one is fairly easy. Is, yeah. But two is already not trivial. You have, you have to sit down and think for a while. All right, n equals three, as far as anybody knows right now, is not so easy. Okay, so now, um, about five years ago, Boss Lemons, collaborator on this book and some articles, and Michael Scheutzoff, who's another collaborator on some other articles, uh, found a proof of the following, I think, very nice result. So it doesn't prove that conjecture. However, it does give you a sort of general, pretty good upper bound. So it says uh, f takes rn to rn is non expansive in the soup board. It says if x log is a periodic point of f, of period p, then well, we don't have two to the end, but it's not bad. It's, it 
says then t is less than or equal to the max as k goes from uh, 1, let's say 0 to n of 2 to the k, n choose k. Okay, so the, the history of this subject, there are many names, but the, the starting point is approximately 25 years ago in an article by Coglu and Kringle, who were not interested actually in the soup norm case. They were looking at the same sorts of questions for the L1 norm up at the top of the board. And they proved that if um, you have a compact subset of Rn, and you have a map F of that compact subset into itself, which is non-expansive in the L1 norm, then for any x in that compact set, F to the k of x approaches a periodic orbit as k goes to infinity. The same thing, by the way, is true here if you know that there's at least one periodic orbit. If you know that at least one orbit remains bounded, then every orbit remains bounded, and every orbit as f to the k of x, as k goes to infinity, approaches a periodic orbit. The periodic orbit may not be unique, but it approaches some periodic orbit. Now, let's look at what this says when uh, n equals 2. If n equals 2, I think this actually gives you the theory. It's k equals 1, and n is 2, you get 2 times 2 is 4. And when k equals 2, you get 4 again. So n equals 2 it implies p less than or equal to 4. n equals 1 it implies p less than or equal to 2. And great, it gives you the more or less easy cases. And then you start becoming slightly disillusioned because n equals 3. Right, this is a lovely proof. I, I mean, it's in the book. In this okay. book? Yes. And the proof now. I mean, once you have the right ideas, as often happens in mathematics, can be given, let's say, in six pages with this result, which contrasts in a very unpleasant way with the proof for n equals 3. But for n equals 3, this gives you what? Uh, I, guess, I think it gives you an estimate of p less than or equal to 12. For n equals 4, you get an estimate that gets worse, p less than or equal to 32 from this. And of course, the conjectured upper best upper bound is 16. n equals 5, you get p less than or equal to 80 from this. The conjecture, of course, is 32, and it gets worse and worse. On the other hand, if you stare at this for a while, you lose Sterling's formula, you realize this is basically like 3 to the n over the square root of n. It's less than 3 to the n, for sure, just by the binomial theorem. So, but it's not 2 to the n. Yeah. Okay. So now, what other evidence is there for 2 to the n? And what am I hopeful that some... Can I just ask you something? If you try to modify your 2 to the n example to get 3 to the n, I guess it's non-expansive? Is that... Instead of well, the two to the n with this? Instead of plus or minus one to the n. No, the top board. Instead of plus or minus one to the n, use plus or minus one and zero. So I'm going to say, it's, that's a, a very good question, and I'm going to come to that in a second. I assume <laughs> it's non-expensive. Non right? Yes, yes, absolutely. You could do some, try to do something like that. I'll, this is, in fact, the question I'm going to raise. All right, so what else is known in general? So Richard Lyons and I, we never published it, but the proof is given in that book, proved that if the period P, remember this is the period in the 2 to the n conjecture, the period is a prime number, then P must be less than or equal to 2 to the n. So if you go back here to this n equals 
Three case, well, I mean, if you combine, and that's not a hard, I mean, we do that in one or two pages. So if you combine that with this, then you would say that, well, you could at least eliminate 11. Okay, that couldn't happen. All right, so, and as far as hard evidence goes, that's about where things stand now. So, okay. so this argument cannot be extended to a product of two primes? Not that we could figure out. I won't say it couldn't be, but we don't know how to do it. We didn't figure out how to do it. But you would get that those two primes would have to be each less than two to the n. Yes, you would get that. Yeah, it isn't bad. <laughs> It isn't good either. It doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> all right, but yes. Um, all right, so now let me come back to the question that was raised. Let's try to ask something much more modest, which is something that people in this audience might be able to address. Let's do exactly what's suggested. Let's let D be the set of things uh, uh, minus 1, 0, 1. So in other words, this is the set of things in Rn with xi equal xi in the set minus 1, 0, 1. For so D has 3 to the n elements. Okay, so suppose I give you a map F which takes D, well, let's, let me be a little more precise. Suppose F takes some subset E contained in D to D, it is non expansive. respect to the, this norm. So the distance between two points doesn't expand. Uh, then it turns out you can, it has an extension F tilde, so there exists an F tilde which takes D to D, which is non-expansive with respect to. So that, that's still true. You can always extend it in a way so it remains non-expansive. And now, a very special case of the conjecture would be if such a map, map F here has a periodic point of period P, the period is less than or equal to 2 to the n. might seem like a very modest conjecture, okay, but it's not known to be true for n equals 4 or n equals 5. Okay. So I pose this as something for people who are serious about using the computer, but I have to warn you, it's, it's, a, it's a finite problem. It's a finite problem, but it's a very large finite yeah. problem when you start <laughs> sitting down about it, looking at it carefully. It's not even known. But this argument is shifting. Uh, it is it's a contraction, but the period is not. <coughs> this argument at the top board, when you label 